This episode of The Ride is brought to you by the Weaver Leather Flex Contour Wool Blend Felt Saddle Pad. The unique flex contour design of this pad follows the curve of your horse's back, locking the pad in place for a great fit. Boasting a wool blanket, top, and top grain wear leathers, this pad looks as great as it performs. In your choice of half an inch or three quarters of an inch thickness, the high wool blend felt pad liner offers natural shock absorption while drawing moisture away from your horse. Pads made with high quality materials will last for years of riding and keep you and your horse more comfortable. Buy your new saddle pad today at ridethebrand.com. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Ride. This is Nicole Cherico. I am here with my co-host, Jillian Sinclair, and today we have actor James Landry Abair here with us, and many of you probably recognize that name from 1883, although he has been in many other films and, and many other TV shows and, and lots that involve the horse industry. So thank you so much for coming on here, James, and talking to us and, and letting listeners get to know a little bit about more of your horse life rather than just your acting and your professional life. Yeah, howdy y'all. Thanks. I'm so excited to be here. I love horse and rider, so it's really cool to be a part of the ride. And and yeah, when I'm not on set, I'm taking care of my own horse and working as a ranch hand for a horse trainer and her husband who's a special effects guy. Uh, just learning everything I can about horses and trying to take the best care of my own that I can. And I live in a little horse town just outside of LA, so you can ride your horse to the saloon or to the P.O. box and it's the closest thing to L.A. that doesn't feel like L.A. I, I can understand that. I've only been to L.A. once, but yeah, it's I'm from Chicago, so I'm not like I'm used to the city, but it is. It's a lot. So to, to find a little horse community outside of L.A., that's that's really cool. And I didn't realize that even existed. So, yeah, yeah. Same here. I actually shot Westworld at a movie ranch out here. And the guy who blew my character up like the robot or whatever he another special effects guy but he also does the trick horses for the movies and uh, he had these two trick horses liberty and legend and they have been in more movies than i have and i think liberty was like daniel day lewis's horse in lincoln anthony hopkins in thor and a big beautiful black horse and legends is like gorgeous paint horse like it would have been the chief's horse back in the day you know just you know, two blue eyes and, and just all the right markings. And according to JT, they had over 250 tricks each, which I think was more than, who was it? I don't know. Trigger? Somebody, somebody back, yeah, whoever set the record, you know. Yeah. So he, he was always real proud of that. But anyways, I, I would come out here to ride with them. They have this beautiful ravine and the water doesn't run through it as much as it used to, but I mean, I'm just in heaven out there. You just feel like you're in a Western and they shoot a lot of Westerns out here. And it's kind of the perfect marriage of all my favorite things, which is uh, horses and movies. That's super cool. So you've, you've talked a little bit about how you, you know, made the transition to L.A. for your career. And then you found that horse community out there. But you're originally from Louisiana. And I believe I read that you grew up on a Native American reservation. Is that where you found your love for horses? How did that all begin? Yeah, I think that I mean, that definitely growing up on the res shaped my relationship with the world, thus horses and and everything but but yeah i was adopted by a native couple that couldn't have kids and yeah it it, it turned out to be just a, an incredible experience being allowed to attend the chittimach tribal school and i believe i was the only non-native at the time that maybe the first non-native they allowed to to go to school there and and that was in south louisiana where I, you know i was but my best friend's mom, she she had horses and loved horses. And and so I think that's where I was first introduced to them. Also, my uncle has a, a cattle farm in Louisiana. And and that's probably where I was first introduced to horses, actually. And, and yeah, I just just loved it. You know, like a lot of horse people just, you know, sometimes enjoy being around animals more than people. And, you know, horses are, I just think, such a... I mean, you know, animals can be just such a reflection of you and whatever you're going through and whatever you bring or whatever you, you know, bring in the ring or leave outside of it. And and I feel like it's it's really pushed me on a journey to, you know, just try to be my best self. And even if it's just to br breathe, you know, like just take a breath and and relax and, you know, just that energy you want to have around a horse. 
and and yeah it's been such a such a journey from here to there but from the reservation you know they started shooting movies in south louisiana after katrina and and i thought well that was about the time i was trying to figure out what i want to do in my life and i thought well maybe this is it and and so started working as a local actor and chased the dream out west and then Eventually got in a Western and found this little horse town. And now I'm living and working as a hand. I've been doing that for about three years now for this horse trainer. And, and yeah, it's just been life changing. You know, they taught me so much. And it's the first time I think I felt fulfilled outside of the business, you know, just taking care of the horses every day and stuff like that. And, and that's been so freeing, I think. And, and yeah, and, and then one thing led to another, I think. You know, had I not found that, I might have not ended up being weighed in 1883. And, and I feel like it's all connected, even growing up on the reservation, you know, that character yeah. knew a lot about natives. And and I think Taylor Sheridan thought maybe this is a guy. Yeah, I was going to say that that's really interesting that, you know, you were able to grow up on the reservation. And then I'm sure that was helpful for your character development for 1883. So what was that process like, you know, just starting the show and, and with the horses and, you know, how did that kind of fall into place? What, what was that like? Oh man, it was a dream come true. I mean, I feel, you know, it all started with cowboy camp and, and getting ready to go. A lot of my pals were like, Oh dude, you are, you are going to like run circles around them on horseback. You are so ready for this. You were born to play this role. And I learned so much at Cowboy Cam. I mean, it was just the best of the best, trying all the different art forms, you know, like, you know, from, I mean, we started out, we would, you know, warm the horses up in the arena in the morning at Taylor Sheridan's ranch where we'd all show up. And like, I was just, this is too cool. Like we're, you know, showing up at the crack of dawn at Taylor Sheridan's ranch. I was such a huge Yellowstone fan before all this. So to be on the prequel, your favorite show is, you know, just unreal. And, and so, yeah, we warm up in the arena in the morning and then, you know, we, we kind of take it up a notch and we do stuff in the arena and then it would be like field trip and we go out in the field and round up some cows and, and then we'd start roping. And then, you know, eventually we got to do some raining and some cutting and like, you know, all these, you know, different horses just the the best people in the world or whatever they do you know like one day we got to go to casey deary's and ride his you know really expensive reining horses and they make you feel like you know what you're doing and and it was just so exhilarating that was that was a really fun day that set out but cowboy camp was it was just so much fun for all of us you know it was a bonding experience with the horses we ended up using ultimately and of course the people and i think after shooting the whole season, I mean, we just got to ride in some of the most beautiful places in the world, some of the, you know, best horses and, and, you know, the cast, I mean, just being out there with Tim and Faith and Sam was, I mean, they were just always having a good time and cutting up and keeping it loose, even though, you know, a lot of the, the scene work could be pretty heavy. It's great. I, the thing that I really appreciate about Taylor, and we don't necessarily work with a lot of the actors for our job. We work with more of the horse trainers. So like Casey Deary, we work with him and we work yeah. with Matt Mills and, and you know, yeah. we work with all these guys who make appearances on Yellowstone and The Last Cowboy. And, and, and it sounds like they have a hand in helping you guys get ready with Cowboy Camp. And, and I think the thing that I really appreciate about Taylor is that not only is he bringing the Western industry to, you know, the, the, big screen like you know now people in all households know what raining is and cow horses and mm -hmm, like my mm -hmm. I'm like I said I'm from Chicago and like my one side of the family who grew up in the city they're sitting there and they've never understood they've never connected with me over the horse thing they're like what do you do and now they're all obsessed with Yellowstone they're like oh my god you know this person and you do this and I'm like yeah my horse I literally ride rainers like what they're doing in the sh show is what I do but going back is I really appreciate that Taylor puts you guys on these horses and actually teaches you how and and obviously you had riding experience but 
you know, most of these actors probably come in with very minimal writing experience and, you know, to, to really teach them how to do it and just really give it that authentic, this is really how it is. And it's not some stunt person that's doing all the work and they're, you know, you have a tight shot of their face. So it kind of looks like they're riding a horse. Like you guys are actually doing it all. I, I tell you, one of my favorite moments from the whole shoot was it usually, you know, they, they'll have the actors do it and then they'll put the stunt guys in and have them really do it. And, and so we did the scene where we're chasing some bandits or whatever. And, uh, and it's time to swap out the stunt guys. And Taylor looks at me and he said, James, if you want to do it, you could do it. So I was like, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I have another. That and, is dope. Uh, and so, yeah, it was such a dream to just ride out there. All the stunt guys were like, oh, we're doing it with the, with the doubles. And I was like, no, Taylor said I could do it. I'm in. Sorry, Dylan. And, and my double on that show was Dylan Heiss, who's, he's just cowboy and stuntman. And we've done a bunch of movies together. You know, he, he did me on, I think, Westworld, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, 1883. And, and yeah, it was fun. But man, those, those Wranglers and those stunt guys were some of my favorite too. It was so awesome just hanging out on set, you know, listening to them tell stories or jokes and, you know, just watching and learning and, and, you know, I've, I've wrangled on some smaller gigs with JT, like just commercials and some mini movies and things like that. And I tell you, I love it so much. Like I almost love wrangling more than acting. I think, I mean, you're just sitting around on a horse on set most of the day. I'm like, this is heaven again, you know, two of my favorite things. I love that. And it certainly shows, you know, I feel like you can tell, on shows like 1883, where it is the actors and they do love what they're doing. And for me, it's one of the most accurate shows I've seen horse wise, because I feel like as a horse person, we're always, you know, when we watch a movie that has a cowboy or a horse in it, like I'm always sitting there criticizing, like, you know, the, the horse aspect of it, because there's always things that are so wrong. You know, I've seen like movies where the cowboy hats are on backwards and just like little stuff like that. And I uh -huh. 1883 was so, so good. And, and every like it was just you felt like you were there a part of it and everything was so accurate. And, and you could tell that it, it was the actors doing it. And I think that's what kind of helped made the show stand out more than any of the others. So with the horses, you know, obviously acting itself is on a hard enough job, but when you bring a horse into it, how does that change the whole scenario of you acting? I mean, it's adding a whole nother variable to the set. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's huge. I would often joke that sometimes the hardest thing was to get them to stand still, you know, like just get them to relax on the mark. And a lot of times Wade was on his own, you know, so you know, horses are herd animals. They want to be together, right? So one goes, they all want to go. And and a lot of times it had to be just me while Ennis was off flirting with Elsa or something, you know? And I'm like, I just, I just need you to stand here. You know what I mean? Like, and, you know, a lot of times I just had to remember to, you know, that it was me too tensing up and I need to breathe and relax my legs and, and all that stuff. And, but yeah, it definitely changes things. I, I feel like it kind of... <laughs> help the acting for me in a lot of ways because you're more present and like i'm just concerned about the horse and and that kind of stuff and then you just kind of say the line and found it was it would be better that way sometimes you know i feel like you end up kind of just being yourself almost at that point you know you're yeah. you're just out there with your friends riding and, and enjoying the experience and so you had you know you were given a horse or signed a horse how did that work with where they were giving the each actor a horse you know do they see uh, you fit with you know what was that process yeah we got to when we got to cowboy camp it was kind of like you know everybody we were trying out different horses and, and every day we you know we'd ride a couple of different horses a day usually we'd have one in the morning and one in the evening because it was so hot there and we didn't want to out. And so, yeah, it was really cool to have that, to see how we got along and, and how the horses, you know, got along with us and, you know, just based on experience and all that. So, so it was really fun experience. That I think you would not normally get, get, you know, being able to try out all these different 
you know, awesome horses. And I've also learned that when you show up saying, you know, you got your own horse and you got all this riding experience or whatever, you usually end up with the worst horse. They're like, okay, this guy can ride. We're going to give him a horse named Bull. And, you know, the ones who can't ride, we're going to give them this sweet little thing with this nice gate. And, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say anything anymore. And that's the way to show up, though. I mean, you, it, you know, I feel like I just, I learned so much while we were there. And, and, and yeah, I think, you know, people just assume because, you know, I work as a hand with horses every day and I got my own horse that, you know, you know everything. But, I mean, these guys were the best of the best too. Like it was such a Taylor Sheridan, you know, it was like he opened up Disneyland for horses to us. And and yeah, I was just in heaven. It was it was so cool. And I think in December we're supposed to do a celebrity cutting horse event. It's a charity for charity, which is Taylor Sheridan supports this this great program for cancer. People are dealing with that and then they're gonna do I think it, it might be like Yellowstone versus 1883 in the cutting horse competition uh, or maybe just in my head <laughs> i'm like hoping that you know we can come in and do the damn thing and so i'm excited to maybe get in uh, cutting in the meantime i just met a guy with a great cutting horse and some cows and 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 yeah excited to you know get into other things like i always want to be a better roper and I mean, raining is just so much fun, as you know. I was like, wow, it was all this stuff that I had never done before that I was like, this is exhilarating. And I mean, cutting horses, like I really, I really enjoyed that a lot, too. So I, I know they've done the they've done those charity events and the celebrity cuttings at the cutting fraternities in the past. And that would be a really fun twist on it if they did 1883 versus Yellowstone. I would I would right. be very excited for that. Yeah, me too. Me too. So. Yeah, hopefully uh, that happens this December. I would love that. You you mentioned like just now, you know, kind of being branched out into this new world of of performance horses and the reining and the cow horse and the cutting. And did you have any experience in those industries, or was like getting into eighteen eighty three, going to cowboy camp and and meeting like you know Casey and and whoever else you might have worked at? Was that kind of your first taste into the performance horse? Yeah, I think outside of roping, you know, we got a great little roping arena in town, and they do practice and events every week, and I would always go and and you know wanted to be a part of it you know still don't feel like i'm the roper yet nor do i have a roping horse but but i used to love to go out there and just round up the cows and you know that was kind of some of the things i did to you know get ready to go to 1883 too you know because i i realized that we were going to be doing a lot of work with cows and i didn't have a lot of experience with that specifically and and so as soon as I found out I got it, I was I was on the hunt to go round up some cows, and I, it was like, oh, this is my new favorite thing. Like, you know, I I love it. It's just you know so much fun. Well, you're you're already a horse person, right? So like going this this movie and, and the TV shows, this was not your introduction to the horse world. But yeah, the first time that you ride a horse on cattle, I've 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 shown in the cow horse and, and I have a rainer right now, but going down the fence that first time on that cow horse, I was just like, Oh, this is cool. Like now uh, I know why people do this. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. No, I feel you. I'm I'm super excited about figuring out, you know, like what performance horse thing I want to get into next after getting a taste of them all. And not being the greatest roper, I feel like I'm a, I'm a pretty good shot. And and JT used to be, in, they do the mounted shooting around here. So it's like you have sawdust bullets and you ride and you you pull your six there and you, you shoot the balloons and and then you go for the rifle or whatever. And and it's like, for me, I'm, I'm kind of looking to get into something that, Ideally, I could use in a Western, you know what I mean? Like roping always, you can always rope the bad guy or whatever it is, right? Or rope a cow, like that's handy. I feel like the mountain shooting is, you know, also pretty handy. But I, I thought that would be the funnest, easiest thing for me to get. Absolutely. So when you, you kind of mentioned like, you know, these skills help you set yourself up for success in, in future roles. And when you decided to get into acting, was it always the goal to be in western films or did it just kind of end up happening that way that's a good question you know i think it's probably a little bit of both 
you know, I, I'd always would watch movies and, you know, kind of gravitate towards the character I thought I could play and, you know, felt like I could, I'd live in those worlds. It's, but yeah, it, it did just kind of start happening naturally. I think, you know, the Westerns have kind of come in waves, you know, I feel like years ago they like remade Mag 7 and, and Hateful Eight and all that stuff. It was a bunch of big blockbuster Westerns, but I don't think they made bank business wise at the box office. I don't know if they made, and I feel like it was like Westerns were in and then they weren't bankable. And then Taylor Sheridan made Yellowstone, all this stuff he started doing and now they're bankable again, you know? And, and so I feel like more and more I've been coming up. And so it's, it's kind of, you know, when I did Westworld, I was, I think that was probably the first Western I had done. And I was excited to do all, to like do the riding and stuff, you know, cause I thought I could ride then. In hindsight, I realized you didn't, I still don't, but you know, I learned something new every day here. It's, it's so great. I mean, but, but I felt like, I didn't get to do the riding that I wanted to do in the Western. And I met JT with the trick horses and I was like, man, I want to, I want to get so good that it just makes sense for them to let me, you know, do my own stuff with my own horse. And, and, and it's actually safer that way. And, and so, yeah, I, I kind of, that's when I started coming out to acting and then got the ranch and gig and, just been trying to learn, you know, everything I can from the best. There's so many incredible horsemen and women out here that are just like, you know, legends in, in the business. And, and, and yeah, so I'm just, you know, everybody does it a little different and I just kind of been out here learning from the best, but, but I think it, that moment with Taylor on set, when he let me do it with the stuntman, I was like, mission accomplished, like all this work you know, led to this moment. And that, that is actually how it started. You know, I think over time it's, it's become about so much more, you know, just my relationship with, you know, my horse and, and any horse. And, you know, I just, I just love it. I love it. You know, just go, You're going out there and mucking stalls, you know, it's like, you know what I do usually when I get busy, I have an audition is I, I record my audition on this line learner app. And then I go out, side and I start mucking stalls and I just listen to it on repeat and the horses probably think I'm crazy but but yeah that's we do that together every day hey you're in good company talking to us because that is literally what we do for a living <laughs> yeah yeah you know the reality of of what this is and yeah. but yeah I think there's a lot of honor in it and and I I often joke that it's like you know, those like, what do they call them? Those like sand, those Zen gardens, those little sand rake things. I'm like, it's a giant Zen garden when I'm out there. Just, you know. Just a Zen garden with some manure mixed in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it, though. I, I really Yeah. Do. It seems uh, like you've certainly found your, your niche. And I think that's something that's really cool about what Nicole and I do and, and what you do is that we're able to kind of specialize, I guess, in, yeah. you know, the horse part of the industry. Like, yeah, Nicole and I are in publishing, but we're in equine publishing. That's, you know, it's, we get to deal with horses. We talk horses all day long and it, it really, I think we're very, really lucky that we're able, you know, have that opportunity. So is that, you know, obviously you, you love the horse life and you have your own horse. So tell us a little bit about your own horse. Like what, what do you oh yeah him? well his name's Frenchy and I found him at a rescue and, and fattened him up and and he's a big gray warm blood so he's actually an English horse that I ride western for but luckily luckily the horse trainer who I work for here she she specializes in a lot of things like I mean just things that you know you should do before you even think about getting on the horse you know everybody wants to just get on and go and you know she kind of specializes in problem feed and has taught me how to do farrier work and you know, saddle fit and body work and things like that. And, and I tell you, if I didn't book 1883, I'd probably be looking for a, a trimming gig right now, you know, but, but yeah, it's so, you know, nice just to be able to trim your own horse's feet even. So they kind of helped me figure out how to, you know, find the right Western saddle to get over his big withers and make sure he's comfortable, but he's really tall too. He's, almost 17 they sold him at 17 but he's 16 three when you put the stick to him 
And and so he's a lot of horse. He he actually used to be a hunter jumper, and that's what I think he competed doing. And he's got a neurological issue, you know. So like his back leg, you know, kind of kicks out sometimes. Like when he tries to go back, for example. And uh, and I think that's when he probably couldn't compete anymore, and probably how he ended up at the rescue. And uh, when we started looking for the right horse for me, we found him and his buddy. And she was like, "Well, adopt." They were inseparable at the time and and she was like well, I'll, I'll adopt we'll get him if you and if you get frenchy and uh, so we got the pair and took them home and 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 they're just they're so incredible I, and the, the the one they got too attila was like he he tra- he had a passport thicker than probably any of us like he had traveled all over the world doing that stuff and and it just seemed like he he had lived an incredible life. He's a lot older though, his buddy. But but yeah, I think just a testament to their character. They were like, let's keep the boys together. You know, we'll get one if you get the other. And and now we got six here total. And and yeah, so it's that's, that's kind of the perfect amount. I like it. Yeah, when you say you you don't necessarily have a rope horse, I can see how a almost seventeen hand warm blood might not make a really great rope horse. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, what can I do with this guy? Yeah, you can I, love I, him. I think I when I got him, I was not. I thought I just wanted to trail, and of course now I'm like all excited about this performance stuff, and I'm like, ooh, I want a rope. I want a da da da. You know. Well, I'm sure your friend Taylor can probably hook you up with a uh, with a horse that can do those disciplines. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're right. And I feel like with that celebrity cutting horse of it, 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 it might end up, you know, you can get ready all day, but you don't know what horse you're going to get. And sometimes I feel like with the cutting thing, it's kind of just like hold on and let him do the work, right? Or her. And, and so, yeah, I'm excited to see. I feel like that's going to be the big, you know. I love it. We might we might have to get back in touch with you after your cutting and, and hear what you think oh, about that your... that would be awesome. <laughs> I would love that. Yes. We we would love to hear your journey into the performance horse world. That'd be so cool. You mentioned that you got your horse from a horse rescue. Was that always the plan? Like, did you intentionally want to to adopt, or or was that just kind of an accident? I think, frankly, at the time, it was more about what I could afford. And, and I feel that. <laughs> yeah, right. So just the reality of the horse world. I feel like my boss lady is really good at that kind of stuff, and she's like, I'm gonna start looking. And, and we didn't make it too far before we saw those two guys at the rescue and we were kind of like, oh, we got to take them home and fatten them up and see what we could do. And, you know, I think with her particular set of skills, she thought maybe she could, you know, just do more for them with their, they both had neurological things. And so, yeah, we started trying stuff and they're in great shape. They just, they look incredible now. Like they don't even look like the same horse. And, you know, we've had time to bond and, and yeah, just, I, I just, I just love those guys and the relationship is everything, you know. And obviously it, it takes a special person to, you know, take on that project of a rescue horse, you know, so I feel like it's, it's so much dedication to them. So what was that like when you, you know, you first got them, you know, obviously you said you had to, you know, put some weight on them, but as far as as riding and things like that. What did you experience with transitioning him over to Western and, and just, you know, bringing him, bringing him home? How did that go? Well, you'd be surprised what, uh, you know, fattening them up will do, you know, on a full belly, they, they see it like they just start just better and better, you know what I mean? Like over time. And I felt like in the beginning, you know, you, it's like you, you get in a horse, you want to get on and go. And I feel like that was like the opposite of what I needed to be doing when I first got him, you know. And so it was more just about, you know, fattening them up and cleaning them up and, and just, you know, grooming them and bonding with them and kind of letting him adjust to where he is now. And 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 then we'll, you know, start, you know, doing things like getting closer to that you know but it it was cool to practice some of the things they had been teaching me and you know just doing body work on him and stuff like that and seeing where his little spots are where he likes it and you know it was it was nice starting slow even though i wanted to go you know i had to kind of rein myself back 
and and I, you know things now that i am riding him and stuff like he's just i feel like he wants to you know we bonded and he wants to get out there and do stuff and you know i try to keep it interesting for him and and he's just like i just feel like a totally different horse now it's so it's so fulfilling that's awesome it. yeah so you, you've mentioned quite a few times the the people that have helped you kind of kind of transition into being a horse owner and and not just a horse owner but a horseman and and being able to understand the horses in general. You know, I, I would probably guess that they're mentors to you in the horse industry. But are, are there any other mentors to you, or or have you like learned any really great philosophies that you hold close to your heart when you are expanding in your horse like horse life journey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great question. And yeah, tons of mentors. I mean, the orphan in me, my entire journey has been mentors. And, and, but especially out here, you know, I kind of came out here looking for who is the best of the best horse people out here and, you know, wanted to learn from them. And there's so many great ones. I mean, Tracy, my boss lady here, she she's just super knowledgeable, super smart, like oh, forever a student, you know, always thirsty for knowledge and is always giving me homework. And but she turned me on to Warwick Schiller. So I don't know if you know him or if you talk to him, but big fan. Warwick is a very, very, very close friend of the magazines and ours. We work with him all the time. Love him. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, I, I hope he's seen the show and I could say what's up to him one day. I would fan out like he was you know a movie star because to me is he's a rock star for horses and and so yeah if i'm not listening to my lines while i'm out there mucking i'll be listening to works podcast and but you know other mentors out here you know probably most notably is robin lundine she's a legendary stunt woman and and she grew up on the set of Gunsmoke. her parents were doing stunts back in the day and 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 she's just i mean she's won all kind of awards for training animals and stuff and anyway she's got a bunch of horses here in town and and a wagon team and she's i feel like here where i live it's it's you know i've built a strong foundation everything you need to do before you even get on and go and and i feel like at some point i graduated to robin's and it's like all right get on and go and and she's backed up to the ravine here and you could just get on the horse and you feel like you're in a western instantly but she she's taught me a lot too and most notably jump a team you know which is a lot and i'm still learning but i feel like <clears throat> i got the hang of it and it was so nice coming back from 1883 to you know kind of it's kind of like back to reality when you're done with something like that but luckily i feel like my reality is this and and you know outside of you know I, i'd hurry up and get my chores done so i could go over there and hook up the wagon and we go ride in the ravine and i just feel like i'm on 1883 all over again you know what i mean and and i can do that you know today or any day if i want to and it's some of my castmates came to visit and i was kind of tickled by what they said but they were like so it hasn't really been that big of a change for you like coming back from the shoot like it's pretty much it's kind of like texas out here in acton and then i was like yeah no you're right and and although i miss cowboy camp in texas i love it so much i was i i would have never left if i didn't have a horse to come back to i'd still be in texas and i was but i was like you know what no i got it now. I gotta go get friends. I'm sure. Home. I'm sure Frenchie appreciates that you came back home. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I you might have to ask him about that because you know I after learning all these new skills and being like, oh, what do we want to do, Frenchie? Now that I'm back, it's time to work, basically, right? Like he's been on vacay, and now I'm, you know, if nothing else, I'm lunging him and you know just doing something with him every day and kind of making up for lost time but he was in good hands you know I, he, he never had to leave he was with his buddies and and my boss lady he was a horse trainer so you know he was Life he put was on good. a lot of weight while i was gone you know we talked a lot about fattening him up it was kind of like okay just leave for six months go do your western come back and i will be ready to go but he was like oh he's been a couch potato I love it. Yeah, you know, everybody, I, I've listened to lots of interviews, whether it's Yellowstone or 1883 or, or whatever, you know, about Cowboy Camp. And it's just really, I love how excited all of these actors have been to, and, and not even people, I, like, obviously, you're a horse person. So, 
So going out and riding. Yeah, that's fun. Like I would love to go to the four sixes ranch and just go ride all day. Like that sounds like way more fun than hanging out with all the actors on set. Like I'd rather go do yeah. that. But like, mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of the actors, even the ones that don't necessarily come from a horse background, really appreciate cowboy camp and like leave just having a new appreciation for the horses and the horse yeah. training, all of it. Yeah, no, they, they did every, every, all the actors are pretty handy now after, you know, being on a horse for six months and doing all the stuff they had to do and definitely have a new appreciation for it. And any, the great thing is, is anytime they want a taste of it, they'll call me up and be like, can we set up a ride? And they'll come out here and, you know, we'll go to Robbins or wherever and drop into the ravine and, and, uh, and get a taste of it again, you know, but they, I think they also realize how much work it is now. And I'm like, yeah, we can ride, but you got to come help me muck first or something like that. Right. And even in cowboy camp, it was like, you know, we ride in the morning and then, you know, in the afternoon we'd ride some more, we do wagons and, and gun stuff. Like uh, I was having, but I feel like everybody would just hand their horse to the Wrangler and go to lunch and you know i would stick around and help them unsaddle the horses and hose them down and all that stuff and then i'd show up to lunch soaking wet and everybody be like where 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 you been you know what i mean i'm like clean it bathing your horse if you want to bond with them you might want to stick around after lunch so it was kind of fun to give them our time and, and highlight some things you know in a fun way that they all loved it they were like yeah now everybody's getting wet and hosing their horse down and you know, learning how to do their own saddle and stuff like that. And I love yeah. that. You know, it takes a lot to be a horse person and, you know, it's not just you show up and get on and ride, you know, that's, I feel like a lot of people see it that way until they're actually thrown into it. And it's like, oh, this is a lot of work to take care of this whole animal and, you know, the whole process to ride it and everything. So what was it like on the show where, you know, you said that you were working with guns and, and all the, the different props and everything like that. How did the horses handle it? How did you have to like change the way you rode and, and just kind of, you know, what was that like? Because I can't imagine having to run and shoot down something on a horse. And it just sounds yeah. really it was hard at first. But I feel like so is riding a horse and slinging a rope in the beginning. You know, you're kind of like, where do I put? the reins and the rope and you're trying to figure it all out right and, and i feel like it was kind of like that you know wearing a big gun belt and having you know a rifle under your right leg which is you know just throwing off the balance of everything and rubbing and you know trying to figure out all that stuff i got pretty long legs and i feel like i always end up with a tall horse which i don't mind but when a lot of the western too is just mounting you know what I mean? And they're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try to make this look smooth. You know what I mean? But I got this huge gun belt, this rifle. I'm trying to get on this 17 hand horse and you know, just stuff like that. It was, it was, it was tough at first, but I mean, luckily, you know, on that show, there was just wranglers and horses and people everywhere to where if you wanted to practice, like you could get on the horse with the prop thing and just, you know, like, the, I feel like one thing they taught me was shooting with the Civil War thing is like, you know, you would point and then you would, you know, like pick the gun back and then, you know, let it land and then shoot. It was just kind of trying to figure all that stuff out was, you know, it was a lot at first. But even, you know, the ropes, too, where, you know, we had those. Why am I drawing a blank? Is it a, a Riata or, you know, just like the leather ropes, you know, which is a whole different game, right? And but it was so much fun to just be slinging ropes and stuff like that and just feeling like you're being productive, practicing your quick draw and all that kind of stuff. You know, it was just it was heaven. I was like, this is work. I'm getting paid for this. I, I felt like I should be paying them, you know, like yeah. <laughs> like I would I would give everything I had to do cowboy camp all over again. Not a bad gig indeed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a lot at first and then you got used to it, you know, it's just kind of like training with like the extra weights and then, you know, yeah. But, but yeah. 
Well, you know, I, th- I think our listeners would be really bummed if I didn't ask this question because Sam Elliott is such a cowboy legend. Oh, what yeah. was it like? Kind of, I am sure, you know, we're similar in age. I grew up watching Tombstone. I'm sure you did too. And now being able to star on a show with Sam Elliott, who, who is a cowboy legend. Oh yeah, it definitely just bucket list check, dream come true. I was most excited about that more than anything. And you know, they usually say like never meet your heroes, but this guy was everything and more. He was just so down to earth that he was like of the earth, you know. When he looked at you, he looked you in the eyes, like into your soul, and it's just like brother. You know, you're like, Oh my god, like I mean, I was in heaven. And it was so funny because I'm I'm hard of hearing in my right ear and he's hard of hearing in one of his ears. And so at some point he like, you know, came up, put his hand on my shoulder and is like whispering. I could just feel the hot breath and the whiskers of his mustache on my ear. And I was like, this is amazing. But you have no idea. You, you know, I have no idea what you're saying. Right. And I was like, I can't hear out of very good out of this ear. I was like, which ear is your bad ear? What happens if we like switch shoulders? You know, if we switch ears, I was like, what does that mean? And he looks at me and he says, that means we're both brother and so because yeah because that was his bad ear so when i tried to put my good ear to him it was his bad side and it was like okay so we used to i feel like we initially hit it off about being hard of hearing both of us and but he was awesome man like i just can't say enough about that guy he was just so encouraging and you know he'd always just kind of like come up to me on the horse and you know just say something nice or just be like you're killing it brother and I just be like, wow, like you're killing it. Like, don't tell me I'm kill- you're killing it, dude. You know, like, oh, what a guy. And and watching him in the show, he was so so incredible. I mean, he just killed it every scene. I was just, like, I can't believe he didn't get nominated for an Emmy. Like, I, I thought he was just gonna, like, I feel like he deserved it, man. He he was so good. But Sam doesn't care about stuff like that either. Like, he's such a down to earth, great guy. And, and yeah, for him, I think it was about the experience and, and yeah, we, we definitely shared a incredible experience, but you know, he and I, when we went to, we were all doing our fittings and, and getting our hats and stuff. And I think he and I were, we wanted better hats. And so the next morning we ended up at the hat maker at like the crack of dawn, he and I and were getting these custom hats made from this guy who's been doing it, you know, just forever. And I was like, this is to like I'm I was just in heaven, you know, and but yeah, and yeah, he I, I was really impressed with him. Like it was such a long, hard shoot and he was just so tough. Like like when I mean, when it was so hot in Texas and it was so cold in Montana. I mean, like in Montana, for example, it's like we would all just be freezing. Everybody wants warming jackets and any extra thing they could get. And I mean, he was just like, just stone cold tough. Like he was like, he didn't need a jacket or gloves or anything. I was just like, you are a superhero, man. Like, I don't know. I don't know how he did it, but he made me feel like a wuss. So, yeah. I was like, I am freezing. And he's just like such a, yeah, you know, just. I would I imagine that you learned a lot in cowboy camp and in working and riding those horses, but I bet you probably learned a lot working with people who have been in this industry as long as he has too. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, he was just, I felt like he just got what life was really about, you know what I mean? And, and he was, you know, he just somehow like cut through all the BS and was just so, you know, I just felt like, he was never concerned about himself. I feel like he always put his attention on other people and, and was always just trying to help or be supportive or encouraging. And, and I mean, the dude is like, he's like an angel, but like, yeah, it's a bad angel. I love it. I would love if love someone described me as that. So I love <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, you, too. you too. They could see you right now. They'd say the same thing. <laughs> love it well james we have taken up almost an hour of your time and i so appreciate getting to talk to you and getting to know more about you and your horse life rather than the character that we've all seen on screen thank you so much 
No, that means so much to me. It's such an honor to be talking to you guys. And, and yeah, no, I don't know. It, it just means a lot. I'm kind of I'm kind of speechless, but I can't believe it's been an hour. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? Time flies when you get to talk about things that you love to talk about. Yeah, or well, when I we'll... start rambling and forget what the question was. But yeah, it's, okay. it's been great. Well, we'll we'll have to put you in touch with our friend Warwick and let him know yes. what a fan you are because oh we. Oh my god! Oh my! I'm like, I'm like fan girling out right now. You're like, like yes, please. You're like screw Sam Elliott, Warwick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, um, but Sam, Sam, let's no. get Sam and Warwick together. Get the, the superpowers. That would be you such know? a good combination. Like we yeah. need to work on that. <laughs> right? Yeah. They. Yeah. I think they would really enjoy each other's company. Definitely let Warwick know that you were on the podcast and and pass along info because I bet you would love to talk to you too. God. And then I'm definitely staying in touch with you to hear how the cutting is. <laughs> Please do. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Well, first of many, then I hope. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, you guys, thank you so much for taking the time. It means a lot. It really does. It's so cool to to have the conversation we did and focus more on 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 the horses than the movies and and the people. And then you know, yeah, love it. Awesome. Well, thank more you. Up. Before we sign off, do you want to let people know where they can follow you on social media and and see more of your exciting adventures to be, to come? Yeah, sure. James Landry A Bear. A Bear is spelled like Hebert, not Herb. Not confusing at all, right? And my so, last name is also very weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get it. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's very common in Louisiana. It's a, it's a very common Cajun name. And but yeah, James or yeah, if you. If you're trying to figure it out, just maybe type in James Landry and see what comes up. But I'm out there. You can find me. Um, I'm, if you message me, just, yeah, you might be waiting a bit for me to get back because I'm usually out in the yard working with the horses as opposed to checking my social media. But uh, thank you we for do, that. We do appreciate your social media because it is very horse heavy. So I'm, I'm a fan. I, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll try to. I'll try to do more. Just more like a day in the life stuff. You know, just hanging out. Yeah. With this guy. And and yeah, yeah. So Instagram would probably be where you would you would catch my story day to day. Awesome. But then I'll try to do more of that. But thank you guys for taking the time. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys for tuning into the Ride Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode and please be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow Horse and Rider Magazine on social media and find us at horseandrider.com. If you guys have any questions or comments, please be sure to hit us up at horse and rider at equine network.com. We want to hear from you guys. And if you like what you're listening to, be sure to leave us a review on iTunes.